everybody, my name is Zell Prince, and welcome back to yet another reactor video. Now, today we're reacting to SCP-610, The Flesh That Hates Part 2. Now, I said I'd react to Part 2 of this, and I know it's been a while since I watched The Rubber. It's been, like, what, two months or so? And there's not much I could do about this lighting right now, besides, uh, really, this. I have my windows. Yeah, there's not that much I could do about the lighting at the moment. But uh, we're going to be reacting to Part 2, but before we do, I have something right here. Here, right in front of me package that literally just arrived about less than an hour ago. I haven't opened it yet and I already know it's inside. It's something I pre-ordered about back in back in August for ha for hell of a boss. Now, I wish this actually came in when I was recording part episode 2 the about what 2 weeks ago. I think it was almost 2 weeks ago. But you can't complain cuz it's already here. And holy crap, this actually looks really good. Let me get it out of the plastic. Okay, hold up. Let me get out of the plastic. <clears throat> wow. <clears throat> the Luna Plushy has arrived. I ordered this about... What? Yeah, back in August? It's a lot better than I was expecting, actually. It's got the collar. Yeah, the collar's right underneath, right over here. I'm not going to spend too much time on the plushie, but I wanted to, op to uh, open this for today's video. Because I knew this was coming in very soon, but I wasn't sure what day. And it literally went on my phone today and it said it was going to be arriving. Then it arrived literally around 11 o'clock and it's currently 12.30. Um, but yeah. Got the Hell of a Boss Luna plushie here. I'm going to put it over there with the other two plushies I have from Hasbun Hotel. I have about... This makes... Actually, now that I think about it, this is my 15th plushie. No, 14th, actually. That I've collected. I'll show you guys a collection. My... What my office space now looks like, or rather what my room looks like now. I have realized I never did that. I only showed the computer, and when that's when it wasn't finished. So I'll do that whenever I can get to it. And the next video I upload will indeed be the update video of what the heck's been going on with me and why I all of a sudden disappeared for quite some time. But without further ado, we're gonna go I'm gonna throw this plastic over there. Put the plushie right on the desk. This is the seat. And we're gonna go ahead and react to part two of SCP-610 by the rubber. Three, two, one, go. Viewer discretion is advised. So, the biology mutation process of SCP-610 and some aspects of the exploration logs were discussed in part one. If you want to know more, please click here to watch part one. In this video, we will dive further into the exploration of SCP-610. At the end of two, part right? one, we mentioned that the destruction of Site C resulted in a series of unexpected events in Site A. As the strange spherical formation in Site C was burned and destroyed, aerial footage shows the infected entities in Site A going into explosion. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today we bring you SCP Foundation Keter Class Object SCP-610 Part 2. Been After the explosion, all immobile 610 infected within the village rapidly shriveled and died, along with any flesh material spread across inanimate objects. The mobile 610 infected made their way into an upper-class residence building. As the infected entered the building, the ground collapsed, revealing a sinkhole. All infected life that did not evacuate into the hole, remaining above ground instead, died and quickly became shriveled husks. In a span of 30 Wait. minutes, three research... Wait, doesn't this sphere, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've watched part one. The sphere was the what commanding all of them, and the other ones that retreated into the hole had to get out of there because the connection was limited. I don't remember. Teams set up stations within the village's remains. Samples of the deceased 610 infected were sent back to Perimeter HQ for processing and researching. It's like they were starting to die on a cellular level. However, two hours later, seismic activity began to occur within Site A. Two of the original teams remained <clears throat> on site, while the third team was instructed to proceed back to Perimeter HQ with the collected samples. Immediately following the seismic event, a torrent of 610 spores erupted from the hole. 
and layered the area around it for a span of 50 meters. As the eruption Damn. was being reported, both teams at Site A were assaulted by infected hey, flying the organisms. Hell? These organisms oh. attacked by splitting their heads in half and clamping them against research members. Pulling it's like the dogs from Resident Evil when they split their heads open. If anybody remembers that, good on you. ...them into the air and dropping them into the hole. Ooh. Before video and radio contact was lost with the remaining teams inside Site A, a second seismic event began to occur, causing another spore burst. Following this, a new, previously unseen SCP-610 entity began to emerge from the hole. Oh, it was the rebuilding itself. The creature's only footage depicts an engorged human head, approximately 20 times larger than that of an average human, pressing itself out of the hole with no discernible body. The research team's video and radio contact were lost as seismic forces increased to 7 on the Richter magnitude scale Jesus. for two seconds duration, then abruptly ceased. For over one hour, nothing further had happened at Site A. All personnel and equipment are considered lost. With an absence of activity at Site A, the Foundation decided to send in another remote drone to explore the sinkhole and relay transmitted data back to HQ. After approximately two minutes, the drone found traces of SCP-610 material attached to the dirt and rocks at a depth of 15 meters. The material is dormant, but retains its texture and appearance, unlike samples from above ground level, which shrivels and dries rapidly. Hmm. At 100 meters in depth, small tunnels branch out at apparently random intervals. So it has its own, uh, what do you call it? Underground workings, like it, the, like, um, what's the word? It tends to hide more underground than it does on the surface. Because I guess on the surface it's a lot weaker, but it does retain more biological matter on the surface. So I guess, it, I, I don't know. I'm just speculating. An increase in the <clears throat> density of SCP-610 materials found on the walls is noted as the drone continues down. The bottom of the sinkhole becomes visible, and the tunnel tilts sharply, suggesting an abnormal formation. 610 material now coats the tunnel entirely. Movement is detected five meters ahead. The camera focus turns to a moving mass, which appears to be a deer, uninfected, wriggling in the grips of tendrils composed of 610 material. Yikes. The deer is suspended in mid-air. 30 meters past the encountered deer, the tunnel displays large lumps in apparently random placement. These lumps are discovered to have similarities to the infected villagers who escaped from Site A, finding refuge in the sinkhole after Site C's destruction. The sound of rushing water is now detected, and the drone is pushed forward. The tunnel splits into a crossroads at this point. One tunnel leads around a river and then seems to slope downward, while the other is directly above a light source <coughs> in the ceiling. The drone proceeds upwards for yeah, approximately 45 minutes before emerging into a windy mountainside assumed to be in the neighborhood of Site B. The buildings appear to be constructed directly from 610 tissue substance and coated in deceased 610 Jesus. material. After a cursory scan of Site B, it is determined that there is no life present, either <coughs> natural or 610 related. So the drone is directed back so it basically covered itself in an, in a, it basically covered itself over an entire town just to what try and save itself into the tunnel upon descent a deep roaring sound fills the audio and the video feed shows what appears to be an immense human face with no discernible features and stretched to 20 times normal proportions it rushes towards the drone there are eye sockets, but no eyes. A mouth, but no teeth. The drone fires upon this creature, but bullets do not deter it. There is no room it's in the tunnel. It's angry, and now it knows that it doesn't want any SCP-related stuff in its territory. Or for the drone to take evasive action. And soon, the drone is swallowed, cutting both audio and video feed. Approval from Central HQ was granted for a manned assault excursion into the tunnels beneath Site A to ascertain the SCP-610 infection's extent. 
The destruction of Site A and Site C established that 610 could be contained and destroyed, making the source of the infection top priority. The descent into so now they have to find out exactly where the SCP-610, like the um, like the mass part, like um, like I don't know, I guess you could call it the assembly line of the infection, and take it out directly so the rest of the infected does no longer exist. So I wonder if 610 is actually considered destroyed because I know there are some official SCPs that were annihilated in some cases. <laughs> But like they no longer exist in the real world, but are left in documents. But I wonder if six one zero. I wonder if they actually destroyed six one zero completely. I'll probably find out by the end of this. If not, then. The tunnels consisted <clears throat> of five teams, two researchers, and three assault agents, along with enough equipment to establish an underground base of operations. The base camp for underground SCP six one zero operations resided at the bottom of a three way junction, where the tunnels split. The first pathway led from Site A to Cavern HQ. The second pathway connected to the ruined Site B village, where an unknown 610 entity destroyed the previous drone. The third pathway headed west and seemed to follow a flow of water from an unconfirmed source. The two research teams divided activities between building Cavern HQ and collecting samples of 610. No contagious materials were detected within this area and the unknown creature recorded by the destroyed drone did not appear at any point to the cavern staff. Hmm. The remaining teams <coughs> were ordered to proceed down the unexplored pathway with personal recording devices. After approximately 20 kilometers of walking, no infectious life forms appear in the tunnel. The assault team leader then requests a transport buggy be dispatched to them, which is used to continue the exploration. Following this, they come under attack by multiple 610 infected life forms that emerge from the material coating the tunnel walls. While the assault team manages to escape and protect the buggy during this attack, select members are lost to rapid water currents in the stream below. Three uh -oh. members of the assault team remain, <coughs> armed with a single flame unit. They continue with exploration. Wait, what happened to the other? Re did the other researcher get killed? I only saw showed one. Hours later, the group comes under attack again from a smaller number of 610 entities larger than the previous encounters. Dispatching the creatures results in all equipped flamethrowers to deplete their fuel tanks, forcing the teams to rely on standard weapons and short-range personal flame units for the remainder of their excursion. The tunnel Damn. widens out into what appears to have once been a village of indeterminate age. There is a church with a working clock tower and the area surrounding the building has a dent in the ground filled with a substance resembling a liquefied version of 610 fleshy material. The liquid moves with unseen force, rippling outward from invisible contact points and rolling in waves from unfelt wind. The team avoids this liquid and proceeds to the church. Within the church are four pews, one of them shattered and a pulpit. Strangely, the entire area is immaculately clean. The clock tower bell tolls abruptly. This triggers a shudder in the building, followed by human screams that appear to come from above. Light from an unknown source shines upon the ceiling, revealing a large mass of SCP-610 and six <clears throat> wooden circles. Strapped to each ring is a living human, coated entirely from neck to toe in 610. Their exposed head appears uninfected, there is relentless screaming as the bell continues to toll, wooden circles lowering to the ground. An unknown creature cries from outside, prompting the team to hide behind the pulpit. All sources of light are extinguished, pitching the area into darkness. Ow. The camera's night vision is left off, presumably to avoid revealing the team's location. A figure is seen holding a small torch from the church's entrance and lights a Hello. series of candles at the doorway. The flame is then applied to a rope coated in SCP-610, which quickly ignites and spreads up to a chandelier system. The light from this system illuminates the red material holding the captive humans, which shows signs of constant motion, rippling across itself in waves. A flood of 610 infected shamble quickly into the area, proceed to the captives and begin to rip off the red material surrounding them, resulting in further screams and cries. 
The red material Shit. seems to be connected to the <coughs> humans, using them as a source of sustenance to grow, which then provides food to the 610 infected. Feeding Crap. like this continues for six minutes, at which time a figure sounds a gong, and all infected entities move to the pews. The figure then spontaneously collapses as if made from hollow clay. A pillar of SCP-610 flesh rises and extends through the hole behind the pulpit, directing itself toward the gathered creatures. Ten minutes later, it retracts back into the hole, and the infected entities exit the church. As the three team members attempt to leave, one of them is thrown into the air several meters by a tendril that emerges out of the ground. The two remaining members run back towards the buggy. Passing by a building, one of them is ambushed by a figure wielding a large crop scythe, which footage reveals to be the same infected who previously lit the church candles. The last member continues without pause towards the buggy location. However, the buggy is covered. found half absorbed by a SCP-610 mass covering the floor. While attempting to find another means of escape, his camera reveals the scythe-wielding figure approaching. Weapon raised. Two shots are fired, and the video feed ends. Five hours later, while final decisions were underway regarding how to contain or eradicate the SCP-610 threat, a time-delayed video feed from the initial team members lost to the underground river currents became available. This feed was filled in SCP-610 L6 field logs containing the exploration records of Operation Source Point. Remember to check out my new animation channel, The oh. Rubber Talks, where I share my life story, thoughts, and opinions. Just click on the link in the description to enter the Rubber's I guess it's world. No part three. Before we end this video, we are proud to present these incredibly sweet pieces of fan art. A big thank you to all of you. You can now send us your fan art, and we will be more than happy to show off your best art piece in our next video. Check out- Huh. Alright. So, I wasn't expecting that at the end, but... I don't know what- didn't know what to expect. I don't know too- didn't- don't know too much about 6110. But, that was still interesting regardless. I'm not sure if there's going to be a part three of this, but it sounds like there might, but I could be entirely wrong. Um, so I hopefully you guys enjoyed today's reaction video. Thank you for Luna here for showing up from, up in time for me to record this video. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.